All right. So we want to talk real quickly um, about another activity that you can do that, that would be fun for, for people of all ages, and it has to do with bridges. You guys may have done this before, build a straw bridge. Um, so I really like this activity uh, because it is so modifiable based on what you have. So in our write-up, we say, you know, use straws. Um, and I think that's just because one of our partner libraries had a lot of straws on it. You could also use uncooked spaghetti noodles. Uh, you could use like skewers or toothpicks. Um, you could use candy. I'm sure a lot of you have done a build a bridge challenge. I mean, it's just a great way to get a lot of people involved um, and to talk a lot about engineering. So we have an example of a few different bridges that were built. And I want you guys, what kind of shapes do you see in these bridges? Um, squares, circles, triangles, arches, rectangles. Triangles, triangles, arches, rectangles, all of those things. Yeah, awesome. Um, so again, this activity really talks about, um, yeah, go ahead and share that other video. We're gonna go to another video feed here. Um, talks about why those shapes are useful and how they're useful. Um, so really quick, I just wanna show you guys, and this is a great kind of thing to bring up with your, with your patrons. Uh, not all shapes are created equal. So here uh, we have an index card square. Okay, and you can already kind of see how non-sturdy So when you press down on it, it just kind of oh, collapses just like that. <laughs> so uh, squares are not a great shape for building. Over here, though, we have our triangle. So when I press down on the top of it, it gives a little bit, but it doesn't break. It kind of actually turns into a little bit of an arch. So our triangle is a strong shape. And lastly, our arch is another very strong shape. So this is something easy you can do with index cards just to show uh, your patrons that different shapes make different types of buildings. Okay. So we have our strong shapes over here. Now I want to look at our actual bridge. So Kellyanne built this out of straws and tape. Um, and our parameters for this design challenge are that it has to span a distance of at least six inches, which it does. Um, of course, you would only give each uh, each group or each patron uh, the same amount of materials to build. And our um, yeah, our challenge is how much weight can this hold? Um, so Kellyanne has built some nice triangles into this. And uh, I attached that cup on the top just to kind of make this loading process easier. Um, and so we want to see, I have some like little, uh, what do you call these? Just little... Gems or glass, glass, uh, marble kind of thing. Yes, glass, marble kind of thing. I also have some washers. Um, so you just want to use a uniform size. I think that um, the activity actually calls for pennies. So if you have a whole bunch of pennies or just something that weighs an equal amount. Um, so I'm just going to start loading these in here. I honestly don't think this thing will go down because it is built so well. And so you might just have your students or your patrons. Um, Add one by one, see what can hold the most weight. If you want to throw some, oh, okay. So, if, Kayleen, if you were to redesign that, what would you do differently? What, what do you all think? What, sh what should the bridge be? What modification could we make to the bridge to make it a little sturdier? Wider base? Wider base, yeah, I think that's definitely would be helpful. Crossbars on the base, yeah, so oh. maybe some bars coming. Braces right on the here. sides, I like that too. Yeah. More support on these arms. Yeah, it's all great ideas. Stabilizers at the base. Oh. <laughs> all right, so again, that idea of um, creating and then testing and then redesigning. Okay. So I want to go ahead and show you guys kind of what some of our other um, patrons have thought after doing this activity. So this is one of our partners, Kendra. She reviewed this activity for us. And I don't know, you might have a hard time reading this. I'll just read this um, off to you, what her thoughts were. 
So this is from our reviews, our clearinghouse reviews. Um, so again, really important because you can go on there and you can see exactly what somebody else experienced. Kindred said, um, test out the testing process. So I put that cup on top, talking about myself, um, just to help the weighing, you know, and, and, and adding things to it. But you want to make sure that um, you have a testing process for each type of bridge that you have. She also said printing out and perhaps even laminating a number of different bridge designs. So uh, she wished she had um, like put up posters of different bridges so that um, her patrons could have gotten an idea of what kind of bridge to build. She says, measuring out a standard length or two of tape for each bridge. So making sure that each patron had the uh, same amount of tape. Um, kids might have a tendency to over-engineer and make an entire bridge just wrap it in tape because they know that it's gonna be strong. So again, you might limit the amount of tape that they get, just maybe one foot. And the redesign process, uh, part of the process is very important. Um, again, um, it's fun to build a bridge, but the real important engineer tie-in is that they learn and they redesign. And lastly, she says, you might think it's a good idea to offer an incentive, um, but it was not. Uh, it kind of gets a, kind of creates a divisive attitude and you want your, your patrons to be working together. You would uh, influence collaboration over competition, if you will. Um, so just a few helpful ideas, again, on the clearinghouse for each activity. Um, our goal is to have good reviews, so, so please go on there if you do one of these and uh, let everybody know your thoughts. All right, so we're gonna move into our next section called Building Local Connections. So I love this idea of um, engineering in your community, figuring out how engineering is done, 